Welcome back to another Primal Pursuit adventure. My name's Ollie and I'm off on another solo adventure, exploring and spearfishing some of New Zealand's most remote, epic coastline, awesome underwater scenes, hunting for big snapper, big yellowtail kingfish, fighting off sharks, free diving for crayfish, all topped off with an awesome catch and cook on my boat, camping overnight. This is an awesome adventure, stick around for the action. Just some islands and uh, we're gonna stay the night on the boat, get your own food, seafood, going spearfishing, hopefully gonna encounter some big scores of kingy, no doubt we'll see some sharks, gonna try and get some crayfish, rock lobster, and have a mean cook up and just an awesome time exploring the ocean. So let's get into it. Woohoo! Nice condition. Just punched out for an hour and a half from the boat ramp and the plan is to boat camp for the night, spend two days spearfishing, exploring some much further afield islands and areas I've been to yet. I'm pretty pumped, pretty amped, um, we should see some good fish. I'm just about to gear up and jump into the first spot and hopefully get my spear into a nice kingfish, a yellowtail kingfish, so you can see a whole bunch of birds working out here. Just behind this rock, let's get in there and see what we can get. Gonna be catching all my own food for the trip and having some mean seafood cook up, so stay around. Jumping overboard at this first spot, the current was still pushing as it neared the high tide. Green, murky conditions, the water column filled with particle, not the most ideal conditions. But, however, on my first dive down, I see a big kingfish below, hunting the reef. It's skittish and disappears into the depths. I spend some time using my throw flasher, following it down as it sinks into the gloom, trying to lure the inquisitive nature of the kingfish back in. No luck, murky, and not very fishy, I move on. Well guys, pretty uh, hard going in the morning, really green duty viz so far so I've tucked down the coast and I'm hoping, I'm hoping down here there's a few crays, dove here years ago, can't remember exactly where I dove as I was on my little inflatable IRB, no GPS and all that stuff so anyways, I've got some likely looking coast, a few boulder falls and stuff so let's go have a look, see if we can pluck something for dinner. Surely some crayfish down here, nice bouldery terrain, long lush healthy kelp beds, perfect hiding spots for crayfish. Oh, it's a struggle. Searched everywhere for some crayfish. I don't know, I spent maybe an hour and a half just dive bombing every crack, every rock, every little cave along this piece of coast and not a single sign of crays. They're definitely not here. However, I managed to spot this guy just 
resting up in a nice gutter off the ledge and um, got the shot through there. At least I've got um, some fish for dinner, make a meal out of that. But yeah, I'm pretty keen to um, get a bit more action in that. That is a bit sad. So I might try a bit more further down here, this coast, and try and get a, a crayfish. Otherwise, I think I'm going to head off to a very far offshore island and camp there the night. Hopefully there's some better fish life and better visibility there. Well, it didn't take long. Visibility hadn't improved, but there were fish. The school of Kahawai come in here. I finally line one up and get the shot off. Kahawai are very tough fighting fish for their size. Charging away, trying its best to rip itself free from my spear. However, a short fight and I've got my second fish for the trip. A tasty Kahawai, awesome. And then, out of nowhere, a large school of big, big yellowtail kingfish come in. Only in five metres of water, I line the closest up and get a good shot. Just missing the kill switch, and the fight is on. The kingfish is hurt, however, and it charges off into the reef. The fish is very, very hurt, and I know I've got a solid holding shot, a nice close shot, enabling that shaft to penetrate right through the fish. So it's a matter of keeping it off the reef, hoping the tax man doesn't show up any sharks, and slowly working it in. The fish is very hurt, I think confused, and it's swimming towards the surface, busting up onto the surface. A very rare behaviour of kingfish, usually diving down into the reef. Just making sure I'm not getting tangled up in my own line and slowly working the fish around in circles and the fish is definitely hurt trying to shake that shaft off it's still got some fight left in it and as I get closer I realize it's a nice nice kingfish very very good size big fat body coming into the winter months it's going to be excellent eating a few minutes later and I've got the fish in my hands getting my hand up into the gills, the best technique to subdue that fish, and it's a beautiful fish. Absolutely stoked and well unexpected. Quick knife to the brain, dispatching the fish and it's all over, lights out. Alright, crazy. <laughs> well that escalated very quickly what so far was a struggle day in the water couldn't find a crayfish anywhere could barely see much no fish life and then all this just happened school of kawaii came in whacked one of those nearly ripped my fingers off they're they're really stiff and sore i'm not used to this uh traditional banded gun and i'm used to just a a roller which is almost no recall and this just blew out of my hand I nearly lost the gun lucky it wasn't a kingy it would have swimming away anyways sorted the kawai out and then literally about five minutes later I chucked a bit of the kawai guts I was trying to pull in a snapper and then a school of kingies just came in on the edge of the reef it's only like five meters to the bottom really shallow coastline and um, man there was some big fish in the school a couple of them were definitely much bigger than this around 30 kilos surely this one's a 
big fish. I don't know how much this one weighs, but man, here's my 1.2 meter gun. There's the barrel to there. Yeah, so it's a bit over 1.2 meters long and it is a fat barrel, man. Far out, it's a good kingy. Oh, that was so unpredicted. Wicked. Look at the size of them. It's huge. Woo! This random shallow bit of reef here. Oh, I'm so stoked. It's awesome when you just have a bit of recon along a random bit of coastline and it um, pays off. I was just about to hop out, really, another five minutes, but um, yeah. Big kingies just cruising the shallows mid afternoon, unreal. Boom, stoked. So, <laughs> that's epic. Um, well, still wasn't much sign of crayfish, so <sighs> gonna push out to this island and have a look out there. I'd be keen to try and get some good snapper or something different and just make a mission of it. That was so unpredicted. Check this kingie out, it's a horse. Fucking, uh, <sighs> How's that? <laughs> Woo! Whacked him good. <laughs> Almost lights out. Definitely heard him. And, um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he didn't know what to do, eh? Never seen a kingfish swim to the surface like this. He was trying to bust out of the water and just get rid of the spear, but, um, <laughs> nah, man. Solid holding shot, my good old classic Rob Allen. 120 does the job again on a good fish. Got some of my best fish on that gun, my first spare gun. And um, yeah, look at that boys and girls. Fucking slob. Boom. <laughs> All right, better get this thing uh, gutted quickly. See if I can get some blood out of those gills more and um, get on ice. Yes. I love shooting big kingies. Never gets old. Right, I've just managed to squeeze the fish into there. Got ice bottles up in the cavity, all gutted. All the gills are removed. That's gonna sit really well in there overnight. Woo, still pumped. It's always a good adrenaline buzz, whacking the kingy, my favorite. Boom, looks like we're gonna have some pretty nice uh, sashimi for dinner, no doubt. Can't forget about the kahawai. That was going to be sashimi, I still could, otherwise that'll go home and smoke up with a kingy. Beautiful. guys Woo. made it across to another island and um, yeah much more shelter over here it's beautiful suns are starting to creep down in the sky and we've just got endless coastline we'll just see what we come across and then it's cook up time might as well make the most of this amazing weather and I've traveled quite far so We'll get back in the water and see if we can find some uh, more interesting underwater life and, uh, and what not. Right, I'm in another spot. Time to find a crayfish. I just need one. One crayfish for dinner. I think I can do this. Finally, some cleaner water on this nice new stretch of coastline sinking down into the kelp beds. 
I begin my search for crayfish, hunting under every rock, every ledge, every crack. I'm on a mission, I'm going to find one. Time and time again, I bomb down and finally I spot my first crayfish. The unmistakable feelers sticking out underneath this rock. Red, orange coloration, vivid, showing up like nothing else in the water. I go in for the grab. The cray's got nowhere to back up into. A short tussle and I've got a beautiful male crayfish for dinner. Job done. Alright, <laughs> I did it, got the cray for dinner, awesome, so happy, Woo. Back down, I'm on the hunt for some more, I seem to be in a good area, a good piece of coastline. Black angelfish in front of me, then I spot this nice mature green wrasse, quite a rare sight for me in New Zealand, looks tasty but I let that swim. Spooka marble fish, it's not sure what to make of me, quite cool. And then I'm back down in the kelp beds, and there are fish everywhere. It's a nice, nice piece of coastline. Big, long kelp stalks. Great country for craze and snapper. And sinking down here, I find my next crayfish. Again, bright orange legs sticking out. Drop down a kinna, a sea urchin, a favourite food of crayfish, trying to lure this big buck out of his crack, out of his cave. The little rockfish beat me to it, so I go in for the grab, and there's a few of them in there. A couple of nice crays. He holds on for dear life, but I wrestle him out of his crack, and it's a beauty, a nice crayfish. Nice cray. I continue scouting the area and find yet again another crayfish. They seem to be all over. And a quick grab. I make short work of this cray. And that's three crayfish, my limit and more than enough. And cruise back to the boat. Spotting an old crayfish pot here. Beautiful scenes. Alright, how good? I said I was going to get a cray and I actually came back with three. Um, so pumped, so stoked. It's just going to make that seafood feast a bit better. I've been struggling on crays this summer, um, generally do anyways. They seem to be, uh, for me anyways, more prevalent in the winter months. Um, I think they do come into the shallows uh, more often in the winter to molt and change their shell and whatnot. Anyways, so yeah, makes sense. But look at these. Check out these bugs. <sighs> Tasty. This, these two here are good size, uh, good size bucks for me. I'm pretty happy with those. Um, yeah, they're solid, solid bucks. So pumped as. Get this uh, live bait tank switched on. Get these in there. Absolutely. Absolutely lovely. I'm pretty dived out so I'm going to go find a sheltered little bay. This whole side of this island should be nice tonight. It's all offshore wind. Swells like minimal 0.5.7 so it's going to be pretty cozy and comfortable. So that's the plan. All right let's get this live bait tank going. The bung. Much. Got bugs in there. There you go, mate. Got your new house, new home. Won't be chucking that one away. That's the best part. All right, there you go, guys. See you later. <laughs> oh, cool.
think I found a nice calm spot to drop the anchor for the night. Tucked out of the wind. Awesome bit of coastline. Right, if you're new to my channel um, and you haven't seen my boat before, it's a new 500 by Senator and it's a modular design. So simple things like I'll show you right now, for example, the seat being able to move back and forth or be removed completely. Um, it's just awesome. Just enables you to customize the boat and just change it up day to day or week to week or person to person. So I'm just trying to clear up some space for tonight for my bed and moving the Esky chili bin around. So I've just unloosened couple of screws there, one on the bottom. This whole seat will just slide forward. So I can put that right up under the helm station. And boom, I've got the Esky and all my gear on the side there. Now I've got this huge space just to put my bed and sleep tonight. And I've still got all the front storage and whatnot. So yeah, really cool. If you're interested in the boat and want to see a full run through, I'll leave a link up here somewhere, a link in the description and um, yeah it's worth a watch for some really cool features if you're looking at a new boat, um, especially a chamber pontoon boat. And just like that I changed my spare gun holder, taking those out, bait board, chopping board in, all on these rail blazer mounts, love them. <laughs> this is a big kingy. <laughs> Here she is, he, she, not sure, she, he, nice and cool chilled down well pretty good so I'm just gonna whack a section off and sashimi time Look at that flesh, wow. Nice hunk for me. That's gonna be plenty, plenty for a nice sashimi dish. Let's put that aside. And this guy's getting back in the chiller and cooled down. Okay. All right guys, these years, first course, sashimi with just a bunch of random fresh ingredients chucked on top. So here it is, we've got fresh kingi with a bit of lime juice, red pepper, red onion, salt, avocado, a bit of soy sauce, and it's just too easy. A dash of wasabi on the side. 
Let's give it a nudge. Try and get a bit of wasabs. Try and get a bit of elbow in there. Mm -mm. Pretty good, pretty good. Mm. I love kingfish, so versatile. Firm enough, good for sashimi. Awesome for steaks, amazing smoked. I suppose all fish is much the same to be honest, but um, <laughs> no, king is good. I mean, there's a lot of it. This is beautiful. And it's gone. First course is a success. That was really, really good. Seriously delicious, always is. Right, time to choose ourselves a crayfish. Sorry, one of you is getting cooked. Man, I want a smaller one, probably that one, they're quite big. Not small, but you will do. Awesome. Right, Cray, for the main course. I'm not gonna let you jump off the side, I got you mate. Okay, quick as fastest way is just straight down the middle with the knife and then we'll just split that open. There's a little pisser poo tube thing there. And we got two cray halves to cook up. Right, one of my favorite ways to eat crays is definitely just butter, salt, and a little bit of uh, chili sauce of some sort. I got my diabetes juice, uh, secret homemade chili sauce. This stuff is insane. Cheers, Drew, this stuff's awesome. So let's get this up and running. Heaps of butter. Might have to take these towels off. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Real good. Look at that, golden cray, just caramelized, beautiful, juicy, mmm. Right, let's tuck into these. Oh wow. Just falling to bits, so soft and tender. Got the tartar sauce on the side, tiniest squeeze of Lime. Oh wow, here we go. Mmm. Wow. That's some of the best crab I've ever had. That's insane. Oh man, I'm buggered. Full. Amazing um, how full you get off some good high quality protein. Yeah, hunk of kingy and a cray and that's me. Right, let's get this tent up. I'll show you my tent system if you're new to the channel. Really cool uh, canvas tent. It clips into all these rail blazer mounts and comes all over the bow rails up here. Full enclosure and if there's any chance of rain, it doesn't look like it. We're nice and covered and I bought my mosquito net this time because last time I got absolutely munched.
so bloody wrapped with this simple design so easy that literally took like a minute tent set up just got the aft rolled up so I can chill up the back in the evening catch the last rays of sunlight moving inside so that all zips up around those poles for those of you who haven't seen it and yeah fully enclosed later on awesome Bed set up tonight, pretty cozy. Time to wind down and uh, have a hot drink, get a good sleep, and uh, gonna hit it tomorrow, so stay around. All right guys, got my cup of tea, got my snacks, got some chockey, and it's time to chill out. And watch the sun go down. Oh yeah, mad. Got my book on my Kindle. Crazy chilling. I'm chilling. Sun's peeking down. Pretty good mission. Big kingy and a couple of good craze. I'm pumped as stoked. All right, see you in the morning. Good morning guys, made it through the night, no mosquitoes this time thankfully. <laughs> I actually forgot my net which I specifically put aside to pack this time. Anyways, I survived, no dramas, um, pretty good sleep actually, really good sleep. Relative to boat camping. Just getting a coffee brewing and yeah, I might go for a swim soon. Straight down the coast a bit further and we'll jump in there and have a swim for a snapper. Pretty pumped to get back in. First light, can't beat it. This is why I love sparing first thing in the morning. You can't quite see it here as it's so dark and gloomy, but I've spotted a nice sized snapper just milling mid-water half asleep. I'm squinting my eyes, looking away from the fish, very minimal in my body movements and waiting for my chance, which I can't believe is going to happen. Shooting a snapper, such a flighty fish, mid-water. I slowly, slowly move my body around as the fish cruises along this kelp bed. Fast forward a few minutes and finally, finally the fish comes into range. I'm tracking it slowly, still keeping my movements to a minimum and then finally get my chance and slowly stretch out and pull the trigger. It's an awesome shot, it's a stone shot right through the brain and it's a perfect start to the morning. Within minutes of being in the water, I have a beautiful snapper. <laughs> Awesome. Nice snapper to start the day. Further along the coast, swimming, I find this perfect little 
hot spot of bait fish milling on a nice ledge drop off. Clean water, a nice kelp bed, a deep gutter, I know there must be a snapper down here. I take a breath, sink down, holding on to the kelp and the current, and sure enough, here comes a snapper emerging from the depths. I don't have time to stretch out, shooting the steer gun from my hip, and I can't believe it, it's another kill shot through the head, this time from the hip. This morning is going from good to great. Unbelievable. I continue on enjoying the clean water, the fishy reef, an absolutely amazing morning of spearfishing and find another likely ledge, peeking over, taking my time, I just have a gut feeling there's another snapper here and there we are, sure enough I spot a big one down below, I backtrack, make sure I've got a good hold and slowly creep back over and the fisher sends me starts to move and I just pull the shot off in time and it's a nice nice snapper I think I've got another kill shot but the fish kicks into gear and the fight is on the snapper swims around in circles trying to bust me off but it's a relatively easy fish to land once speared it's a good holding shot and I slowly bring the nice nice snapper to the surface after years of spearfishing the thrill is still there hunting these sneaky flighty fish especially snooping coast without using a ground bait once again the swim continues very fishy scenes Silver drummer everywhere. Another nice little snapper coming in here. I'm not going to shoot every single fish I see. That one swims off for another day to grow. A big gutter here full of blue mau mau and sweep. Very cool. Moving along. The bottom covered in the sea lettuce and an eagle ray just sits on the bottom resting up. A beautiful sight. After covering a lot of new ground, I decide to head back towards the boat. And I'm nearing my ground bait. I set as an insurance policy in case I didn't see any snapper. There's fish everywhere, bronze whaler sharks, and peeking over into the scudder, there are snapper everywhere. And good sized ones. I want to take one more fish today and just observe, seeing what's around and decide to take this fish here. A nice fish, another clean, humane kill shot, and that's enough snapper for me. What a morning, incredible. far out that was <laughs> crazy morning on the snapper uh, murky conditions I wasn't expecting too much and just started swimming this bit of coast and there were snapper parked up everywhere that 
early first morning light, the snapper were just milling around in these gutters, half asleep still, and um, yeah, managed to ping off a few. There were so many snapper, I wasn't recording the whole time, that I saw and spooked and this and that, so really cool to see good numbers of snapper and cello. Here's my haul. I had to stop some beautiful snapper here. Look at this nice kelpie. Look at the colours on them. So they're quite dark coloured fish, and then this guy was really really pale and light interesting looks like he's uh almost off the west coast yeah with a generally a lighter color but two nice snapper fish of this size just all over i saw so many um nerves are still kicking yeah oh, i'm just so wrapped some beautiful eating fish there I'm gonna have a big smoke up this week and get all my smoked fish set for the winter months and share that around it's awesome boom stoked as so that's plenty of fish um no more sparing for the trip one last spot a nudge otherwise yeah it's probably uh time to make the long 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 trip home i've pushed a long way a long way from the boat ramp a couple of beautiful snapper <laughs> very nice morning early morning swim i tell you it's my favorite time snapper just are in shallow and uh easy diving plenty around much bigger than this get these on ice and uh, we'll move on breakfast time got a couple of power out there I've just got a panko breadcrumb sliced up a bit of mayonnaise this binder oh, a bit of salt a bit of lime All right, voila. It's a good brickie. Mm. Straight out of the ocean. Big thick slices. I don't know why people bash them up. A bit of texture, a bit of cheese fine. A bit of chalky and uh, coffee. A bit of power, a bit of coffee, a bit of Whitaker's dark chocolate and uh, we're gonna be good to go get back in the water all right guys punch down the coast I'm at Spotex. I've been told there's packies here, uh, this rock, years ago, and it's been years I've been trying to dive it and it just hasn't happened. It's probably a certain time of year when they're on the march and congregate, but who knows? We'll have a look around. I've always wanted to have a swim around here, and um, that's probably going to be it for today. More often than not, when people tell me a spot, it's empty and barren and just dead, but you've got to try things. Sometimes they pay off, so let's jump in and have a look.
Right guys, that's the trip over and done with. Just about home. Saw some nice dolphins on the way home. That was a nice little bonus on top of the trip. Got those power in the morning. That epic run on the snapper. Big king of yesterday. Fresh seafood cook up last night. Camping on the boat. Um, yeah, it doesn't get much better than these trips. They're just awesome. So highly recommend you guys get out there. Whatever size boat you've got. You've seen my other videos with my four meter boat camping. Totally possible, totally doable. So hope that inspires a few of you to get out there. Hope you enjoyed that one. I sure did. It was an epic, epic adventure. Had to work with it. Pretty crappy viz and stuff on the first day, but we got there. So stoked as. If you liked it, please give me a thumbs up. And uh, if you're not subscribed and you watch my videos, please uh, consider hitting that subscribe button. Really helps out the algorithms. Grow my channel and uh, enable me to share these videos with a wide audience. So appreciate if you could do that. Otherwise, promopursuit.co.nz for some merch. All the links down below in the description for gear and whatnot. And yeah, who knows what's next? We'll see you on the next adventure. Cheers.